Hello, this is Mrs. Aldi Peace with her second video here. Today we are going to make corn tortillas. They're not actual, actual homemade corn tortillas, but this is the best that we can do at the time. We've had this on hand. I got this. They're two. I got two four pound, four point four pound bags at work. They were on clearance. Um, they were two fifty each when I got them, and it's lasted a long time because you don't use that much. This is just masa, and it's just basically instant corn masa flour. Okay, it gives you the instruction in there. You can either make uh, four, four tortillas, eight tortillas, 16 tortillas, or as many as you want, as long as you kind of double up on the ingredients and the instructions. So what I'm going to do is follow the instructions for 16 tortillas. Okay, so what we're going to do is get two cups of the masa. Okay, just going to level it out, put them in here, and it calls for the two cups of masa, this is for 16 tortillas, one and a quarter cups water and a quarter cup teaspoon salt. I'm going to put the salt in there and work it in a little bit so I can just be even. And when it does call for, it gives you a measurement for the water, this one calls for 16 tortillas, one and a quarter cups, cups of water. So I'm going to put this in there. Usually it's not enough. So you just want to work it in there and just with your hands. It's the best way that I just get on, get that, get your hands on it type stuff. You know, that's the best way to get it done. Easy. It's kind of messy, but it works. So I put a one and a quarter cups water, but it's never enough. So you just want to go ahead and just put what's it, what's, what it's called for and then add some more water, which I have a little bit here in a cup. So you just want to add a little bit of time. A cup? That's a mixing. It's a mixing cup, but it just, what, it's in a cup. It's a mixing cup, okay? You hush over there. So you just want to work in a little bit of water, add some extra, just a little bit at a time, and work it in there. Need a little bit more. Just a little bit, just couple of drops or just a little pour at a time and just keep on working it until it gets just to a soft mixture and it forms into a ball. Remember it's cornmeal so it's going to be a little grainy. grainy. Is that it? Okay. I guess grainy, yeah. Mr. I think I can eat peppers and not choke on them. <laughs> He, we got a boxing, we got a boxing in earlier, and he thought he was all Mr. Tough, just Mr. Tough over there, and tasting all the peppers that this um, one son sent him. And he started choking and hiccuping and needed more milk and milk and milk and milk. So he's over there just trying to recuperate from that. Okay, so you want to get this? Okay, it's formed into a ball. I'm going to delete your video. No, you're not. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Nice, just like a ball. Ouch. So what you want to do is make sure it's covered after you get that done. You don't have to let it rise. You don't have to let it, you know, wait for it or anything. You just want to just form it into a ball. And what you want to do is just keep it covered. Once you do that, you just want to start forming little balls. It doesn't matter the size. I mean, if they come out different sizes, they all taste the same and they're all good. So what we're, we're going to do this. Can I ask you a question? No. Um, but we're going to do this right now, and I'm going to get this all formed and all situated. Screw you. I'm asking a question anyways. Just because I've never made this, and uh -huh. I, I've always sat in the living room drinking while she's making these. Uh-huh. Are you keeping it dry, or are you keeping it covered to keep it from getting dried just, out? Yeah, so it won't get dried out. Oh, okay. 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 So you Thank just you. make little balls like this, and they don't, have, they don't have to all be the same size. Just form little balls. And once you get, you should get like 16, 17, it depends on how many, how big size they are, about 20. So um, we're going to get this all formed out and we'll be right back with you, okay? Okay, and we're back. And I actually got 16 balls out of it because we're going to, you know, we like them pretty big. I don't like small. They taste just the same though. What I'm going to do with this later on, we're going to make dinner. Remember everything out of our preps. 
But okay, since I got the 16, you want to keep it covered while you're making the tortillas. What I use, oh, and best thing to do is make sure your skillet or your cast iron is already heating up and nice and ready and hot to go. You don't have to, this is really good if you have one of those, it cooks like three at a time. But if you have a regular, just a round scale, a skillet will do. You can only do probably basically one at a time, depending on how big you make them. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to cut and just basic Ziploc baggie. I'm going to cut it up. It's really simple and easy if you put them in between two pieces of plastic. The Ziploc bag is perfect for that. Keeps it from sticking because you don't want to add flour because then basically they will turn into flour corn tortillas, which you don't want because then they wouldn't be actual real corn tortillas. Okay, so I got that going. I like to just cut it like that. So you just have the one thing because it's a lot easier than trying to handle the two separate pieces. What I do is just get one of these balls. And I got this tortilla press. Um, the mister got it for me, I think, on Amazon. Amazon.com. You can check out his channel or you can check out Minba Minbound's channel. Which either you prefer to go to. It's your choice. Minbound. Minbound, like he says. You want to give Minbound the support. The the support. I think he really does need it, and he's a good man. Okay, what you want to do is just put in your tortilla press. Just push this down. This is a really good tortilla press. It's cast iron. You want to just flatten it out. And what I do is just turn it and try to go as flat as I can. To work. You get a nice flat piece. I kind of messed up on this one, but I'll do better. I'm kind of just a little nervous, but just bear with me. A little bit came off, but it doesn't matter because it's just going to go down one spot. It'll go down your stomach, and as long as they taste good, it don't matter what they look like. What you want to do is just put this on the skillet. You turn it down a little bit because I've had it going since I started warming the balls. And you just want to let it cook. I mean, they don't have to turn uh, brown. They just want a little light color on them, or else they will get hard after they they sit down, set for for you know set be set for a while. But after they come out, what I do is just get a round pan or any kind of pan or a Tupperware pan that has a lid. What I do is just set them in here and I just cover them as I go. It keeps them moist. Because if you don't do that, they're gonna harden and they're gonna lose all their moisture. And what I'm gonna do is gonna flip this over. Just let it sit for a little bit, just flip it over, and there you go. You can get a little bit, you know, it does it, it, you're not going to get a color like that on most of them, because if you do, they will harden up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of them go done, and I'm going to get them going, and after the final product, I will come back and show you, and I will tell you what we're going to have for dinner with them. So see you in a bit. Okay, and we're back. I've got the last three almost finished. Like I can tell you, I've been keeping them covered in here. Keeps them nice and moist. I can tell you they're not too pretty, but they taste delicious. I'm just going to get this right here with my fingers because it's easier. Pull these off. And what you want to do is keep them covered and then later on just cover the top with the top of the Tupperware. So, we got this from the press. Like I say, it's masa or masteca. It comes in different forms. You can find this at your local grocery store in the Mexican, or well, they call it Hispanic, but I call it the Mexican aisle, or food, or Mexican surplus uh, food store provider, like Food City. Okay, give you give you an example. <laughs> I've had a little bit of courage, so you gotta. You gotta um, forgive me, okay? So tonight, like, okay, me and my, my mister are eating out of our preps. So this is something that we had on our preps. So this is what we're going to try. I usually make my own homemade pinto beans with bacon. And I usually uh, will refry them. I call them smashed. And I refry them in bacon grease or, or, or cooking grease. So we already have this in our preps. It's already smashed, but I, what I am going to do is put them in a little bit of oil. I wish to, oh, I wish. It would be so awesome if we had some bacon grease in the house. 
I could refry them in bacon grease and they would taste so good. Because if, if, if any of you have had canned refried beans and you know what real Mexican refried beans taste like, uh, sorry, but it's not the same. And what we have for cheese is this nacho cheese sauce. So, since we're living out of our preps, I just put, I'm going to put this together. I'm going to refry these again in just some basic oil, put a little bit of this cheese sauce, and like my, uh, like Mr. Albie P calls me, I'm the spice queen, so I'm going to add all kinds of spices and spice it up to make it taste better. And we're going to, of course, top it off with my pickled, pickled peppers, or if he wishes to have his pickled peppers, he can. So, and you don't need to see that because that's basic. I mean, it's easy. You just cook it up, heat it up, spice it up, slap it on the corn tortilla, and you've got dinner. So, if any of you know out, out there now in the prepping community how to do actual real cornmeal from scratch or how to go about getting cornmeal from scratch instead of the store-bought store to make your own at home, uh, any information would be greatly appreciated. Um, so I'm going to end on that note. And of course you can see him. He's been in here this whole time. And he has made no noise. But then he has been sick. Poor Boo Boo. He's been sick. We finally got him to eat today. And everything he's eaten or drank, he's came back up. So I think because um, the mister kind of made me punish him because he was just like begging for treats because I spoiled him rotten and he made me cut him off from treats. So he was making me worry and I gave him a treat and he kept that down and he finally ate some food and I think he's feeling a little bit better. So my poor boo boo, oh, he's going to be better. So at that note, I'd like to end there. Thanks for watching. And this is Mrs. Albie P. Peace and love. Take care, y'all.